So this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while now, but just haven't got around to it. And it is what to expect after your C-section. So I myself have had three C-sections. So needless to say, I think I have a bit of knowledge that I want to share and pass on to anybody else out there who is going to be going through the same thing. So if you're interested in this kind of content, then keep on watching. <laughs> What's up y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Mama Schley. If you are new here, welcome. If you're already subscribed, welcome back. You know, I got the most love for all y'all. So today's video is long overdue. I have been wanting to do this for quite some time now, but I don't know, for whatever reason, just haven't got around to it. And it is, like I said in the beginning, what to expect after your C-section. So m the video on my channel that actually has the most views is my birth and delivery vlog. Um, I'm gonna link it in the description box below. Maybe go and watch that before you watch this. That way you can kind of see my whole experience and get a visual of it and then come back and watch this. Even to this day, keep getting constant comments and women reaching out to me, asking me about my experiences and any questions and you know what to expect after and what to expect during the procedure and just it's, it was overwhelming the response that I got I wasn't expecting that so I thought that it would be a good idea to do a follow-up video for all the women who do watch that video and you know it is their first time and they are nervous um, what to expect and what to expect after because having a c-section honey huh it is no easy task let me tell you it is quite the process and quite the recovery and i'm gonna help you guys and give you all my knowledge that i've learned from all my three c-sections but before i get into my video i would like you guys to subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed i'll wait a second and give you time to do that Did you do it? Okay, good. Now we can talk. I'm gonna split this video up into two parts. So what happens right after your procedure, like while you're still in the hospital before you get to go home, and then what happens when you go home and what to expect when you get home. So we'll start by um, right after your procedure. So you've done your procedure, put all of your insides that were outside back inside you and stitched you all up and you're ready to go you will be wheeled into what is called the recovery room. You'll be in there for up to about two hours. So while you're in the recovery room, they're gonna hook you up to an IV, which is gonna deliver fluids to your body. You should already have that hooked up before your procedure. Um, it'll be in your hand, like here. They'll hook you up to a catheter as well so that you can pee through it because at this point, you are still not going to have any feelings in your leg. And this is the trippiest part for me, like not being able to move your legs. It's just the weirdest feeling ever, but you won't have any feeling in your legs for about another hour and a half two hours I would say. So while you're in there they're gonna be monitoring your bleeding, temperature, your blood pressure. When you get in there they're gonna put a pad on you. So I don't know if this happens when you have a vaginal delivery um, but you do bleed quite a bit with a c-section so you it's nothing to be alarmed about or it's not out of the norm. Bleeding, heavy bleeding is normal. I think it's not normal when it's like you're soaking through a pad um, an hour or something like that. Something along the lines of that, that's when it's uh, a cause for concern. You will be able to breastfeed your baby right away. If you are feeling up to it, it's all dependent on how you feel and how you've reacted to the procedure and to the meds that you've um, taken into your body. Um, I breastfed right away with all, yeah, with all three of them. You get that skin to skin, which um, you might not have gotten while you're in the OR. You won't be able to eat just yet. What they will give you are like ice chips or water. I was freaking starving at this point. Like I just wanted like the biggest, juiciest burger with like a large fry on the side. So after that, they'll bring you to your room, whether it's a private or a semi-private, whatever it may be, depends on your insurance. Expect to be there two nights, depending on how you recover from it. and the speed at which you do recover. So I'm gonna go over that now. Um, there are a few things that nurses will look for before they discharge you. Uh, definitely having a bowel movement. That's like, I remember like, they would constantly come and check in. Did you have a bowel movement yet? Did you have bowel movement yet? Did you take a shit yet? And I was like, God damn, like so personal. No, I didn't, not yet. Like, give me a minute to breathe, you know? But it's just procedure. Um, that's just one of the things that <laughs> they need to make sure of or ensure before you leave the hospital. So at this point when you're in your room, the, the meds will have worn off. So all the numbing will wear off and you'll start to feel pain. Uh, depending on your pain tolerance, it might be higher for some, lower for others. Mine was kind of in the middle. I tried not to take too many pain meds, but they would come in every six hours and offer me Tylenol 3s. Um, sometimes I would just take it just to prevent the pain. Um, but I mean, if you don't need it. Well, no, you're gonna need it. You're gonna be in quite a bit of pain. It's gonna be, especially if it's your first one, it's a completely different feeling. It's 
very sore, very tender, um, and yeah, you'll probably need the pain meds. So the doctor will give you those, or the nurse will give you those um, Tylenol 3s or whatever. I don't know what they give you in the States, but in Canada, it's Tylenol 3s. Point as well, when you reach your room, you will obviously be able to eat solid foods, which is like, yes, the best feeling in the world. Able to shower the next day, not the day of, but the next day you'll be able to shower. Um, gently clean your wound, uh, which, which feels great. Like, after you shower, it's just... Yeah. So you feel so much better and not so gross and disgusting. So my advice over experience to speed up the recovery process and to get home faster is to walk as soon as you can. So as soon as you're feeling up for it, you have to start moving around. You have to get up and move around. I made the mistake, and which is why I think I stayed longer in the hospital when I had Carter, of not moving for like two days. So when I had Carter, it, when it was the emergency C-section, I stayed in the bed for like two days straight and I didn't get out. And that slowed down my, my recovery process and in turn obviously made me have to stay longer in the hospital. So the second time around, I was like, hell no. Hell no. After two hours after being in my room, I was like, let's go. I got to get up and move around. And whether it's just moving around your room, like going to the bathroom, it doesn't matter. As long as you're up and moving, that speeds things up so much faster. Um, the third time around, I was able to get up and um, I walked around the maternity wing. A lot of women do that. Um, take it slow. Obviously, you're not going to be speed walking out here. It's going to be painful. It's gonna hurt I'm not saying that it's not going to but you got to kind of fight through that pain as much as you can take it easy take your time you're not in a freaking race it's just to get your blood moving and show the nurses that you're able to you know move around it also prevents blood clots from happening so if you're stagnant and sitting in the bed for too long uh, you run the risk of getting blood clots in your legs and that's what nurses um, are afraid of and that's why they encourage you to walk ASAP Another thing I did experience the third time around when I had Chamberlain is um, gas pain. So I never actually had this with my other two C-sections, but while I was in the hospital, I experienced um, really sharp back pain. It was like almost like stabbing and it was really hard to breathe and I was like kind of concerned about it. So I asked the nurse, I described everything. She's like, yeah, gas pains. Those are gas pains and it's normal, especially after having um, a major surgery like that. You're opened up, obviously, so a lot of air gets into your um, into your body or whatever and so it's just gas that is passing through I think I'm not too sure but anyway nonetheless if you do experience that it is is not uncommon it is most likely gas pain um, and it does pass but it fucking hurts like a bitch when it does come just a heads up but not everybody will experience that point the last thing that they do before you they send you home is they put what's called the steri strips it's like these little band-aids they put that on your incision and it's just kind of tapes the wound together um, you can later on take these off I think maybe a week later or they just kind of fall off after they get wet when you're in the shower at home Before they use staples like when I had Carter they had staples and I remember they did take the staples out before I left But now they have like these dissolving staples I guess that just dissolve I'm not too sure about the technical terms so of at that At this point you've been discharged and you think god like I've pff, I conquered it all I'm good now I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna be fine and I'm gonna be you know loving my baby being a great mom this and that Little pause. Being in the hospital, that is half the battle. The the real battle with a C-section is the recovery after you leave the hospital. It takes about a month to recover from a C-section. So within that month, there are uh, guidelines that you kind of have to follow and stick with so that you heal properly and you get no infections and there are no issues. It is requested that you take it easy. So I know this is hard for new moms because how the hell can you take it easy when you have a newborn, right? You're gonna need help. You're gonna need help from your partner, from family, from friends, whoever can help out because it is going to be difficult for you to maneuver around the way you want to with the newborn. And it's okay to ask for help. You know, sometimes we feel like, oh, you know, I, it's my job, so I'm the mom, but what's more important is your recovery for that baby like that's all that matters and people around you will I'm sure will understand that and hopefully be supportive and be there to help you you cannot lift heavy things so that includes if you do have like younger children like maybe toddlers you won't be able to lift them and I know that is hard for some moms but the reality of it is you, you might rip open your incision and what's worse like you know your infant crying because you can't pick them up or your guts all over the place I mean Come on, right? Going to be very sore for the next few days. Um, 
It's gonna hurt to laugh. It's gonna hurt to sneeze. It's gonna hurt to even breathe sometimes. It's gonna hurt to lie down. It's gonna hurt to bend over. It's just going to hurt. It, guys, you have to remember, this is a major surgery. You've been cut open and had stuff taken out of you that shouldn't have been. You know what I mean? Obviously, you'll have pain meds that the doctor prescribed to kind of help with the pain. But, you know, if you think that you can manage without taking the meds, then I would suggest doing so. Um, the most I took was Tylenol 3s and I tried to limit my intake just because I found when I had it, when I had Carter, um, I was like constipated. That's another thing. If you keep taking meds, certain meds will constipate you and then you will also in turn need to take a stool softener. So you're just taking a bunch of things and I tried to just cut that um, the second and third time around by just kind of fighting through the pain and like, you know, getting my pain tolerance up there. So I would just take Tylenol 3s when needed, like if I absolutely needed it. Some tips um, to kind of make it less painful. For example, if you're sneezing or if you have to sneeze, squeeze your tummy, like squeeze your abdomen like this really tight and just kind of sneeze it out. Like when you put pressure or take a pillow and put pressure there and then sneeze, it's going to be very difficult getting in and out of bed if you have a higher bed. Um, the lower it is to the ground, the better and the easier it will be. You kind of have to find a technique to getting out of bed now. So what worked for me was being on my back, rolling to my side, pushing myself up like this and then putting my feet on the ground and then going so like you can't just get up and go like it's a process I'm telling you girls I'm telling you it sucks but it is what it is I also recommend if you do have a two-story house or you have stairs um, limit the amount of time you you have to be going upstairs by keeping all your necessities downstairs as well so in both places so you need to have diapers wipes burp cloths change of clothes all that downstairs as well as upstairs um, that will just eliminate you having to go up and down changing diapers and changing spit up and whatever. I suggest wearing a uh, high waisted cotton underwear just because you know your stomach is still you're still gonna look like you're pregnant unfortunately for even a couple weeks after um, with a c-section just because the wound takes so long to heal so don't be alarmed you will get your body back hopefully um, within with, with time, with time, girl, trust me, I'm still working on mine, but you know, with time you will get your body back, but to kind of prevent it and keep things a bit tighter, um, I suggest wearing high, high-waisted underwear to kind of just keep things fitted and not jiggling around. You will still be needing to wear pads, so I suggest like the overnight ones or the maxi ones, depending on how heavy your bleeding is. And again, just like when you're in the hospital, you kind of have to move around a bit. Like don't restrict yourself so much if you are in pain, get up and move slowly just to prevent blood clots from happening you know work your way up you know just walking around the main floor then you know maybe taking a walk outside like a week after i went to carter's basketball game and people are like didn't you just have a baby and i'm like yeah i did but what do you want me to do sit at home and do nothing no i gotta get out and i gotta get moving and get back to myself like the sooner I, the more I move around the sooner I'll get back to myself and my old routine so I was really determined to like you know nip my recovery time like in half and I think I did a pretty good job about that but I mean this is my third one so you know you live and you learn in terms of cleaning your wound just gently um, so they suggest just washing your body and letting the soap like drip down your body and that would be a way to cleanse it don't like get in there with like your loofah and just scrub the shit out of your room like no you don't want that you need to be gentle with it just let the soap kind of drizzle down and clean itself and then when you um are drying off pat pat it dry don't like freaking rub yourself like you know vigorously just pat it dry and that's it you'll probably have to do that for a couple weeks and then like i said the steri strips at this point will either fall off or you can like peel them off and just make sure that there's no pus coming from your wound like if there's yellow pus that means you may have an infection so when you go for your checkup in i think it's four weeks you can um tell the doctor but um other than that, like you might have like dry blood. You may lose feeling in the abdomen area. I can't feel anything. It's just like numb, tingling feeling. So don't be alarmed, that's normal. Some people get the feeling back, some people don't. I don't know, depends on the person, I guess. You will experience in cramping, like, like contractions basically. Um, that's just your uterus contracting back to its um, normal size. And you may experience that for up to a month. So don't be alarmed, that is normal. He put a heating pad on your stomach or I even use like a, I put warm water in 
in a water bottle and I just kind of put it on my stomach and would lean over like that. Just some suggestions to alleviate the pain. For a month, you're not allowed having sex, you're not allowed inserting tampons in or having baths or basically um, anything into your vagina um, for about a month. And that is obviously just to prevent infection for about a month or maybe even six weeks, you should be back to normal and um, back to your normal routine and feeling a lot better. As long as everything goes well, don't forget to check up with your OB or your family doctor for six, six to eight weeks after your C-section. But if you, there are causes for concern, I would schedule and go in earlier because it's better safe than sorry. So that concludes my video, guys. Um, if you did have a C-section, you know, kudos to you. I know it's not easy. A lot of comments um, about, oh, you know, like, did you feel like you've been robbed of your experience because you didn't get to, you know, deliver your baby vaginally or hold your baby maybe right away, skin to skin, right when they came out. And, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, you know, I feel a little bit sad that I didn't get to experience that, but everybody's birth experience is so unique to them. And I just find it's so, it's so beautiful. Any birth story, re regardless of cesarean or vaginal, like, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you deliver a healthy baby and if that means that they need to have an emergency c-section then who, why, why would I say no to that you know what I mean like I just want my baby to be healthy and that was all that mattered to me and I'm grateful for that you know I'm grateful for my experience I learned a lot I'm able to make this video and give you guys some tips and pass along it to pass it along to other moms who are going to be going through the same thing and kind of you know ease the te tension a bit because I know it can be a scary time but just remember when you're in there to breathe stay calm as calm as you can I know it's easier said than done but what worked for me when the whole process was going on was you know talking to my partner just having a normal conversation with him like any other day um, so that that was something that helped me maybe it'll help you too I hope you guys enjoyed this video I really enjoyed doing it and sharing uh, my experience with you guys uh, I know that it was a highly requested video I hope that it's helped you in some way if I've missed anything or if you have anything that you want to add to anybody who might be watching this video please feel free to comment comment below um, I think that would be great more knowledge uh, the better um, and if you would like to see any other videos related to this please let me know and I would be happy to do them because I have experienced three of them so you know I know a thing or two but anyway guys that's it for me today thanks again for watching we'll see you guys in the next video bye